Welcome to the second video in the playlist Spring Boot plus Firebase to build a CRUD application. In this video, we'll talk about how we can uh, authenticate uh, or authorize our local Spring Boot application to connect to Firebase and also connect to our database which we create on the Firebase dashboard. So in this video, we'll mainly focus on setting up or connecting our local application using some uh, runner starter runner code uh, boilerplate template mainly to connect to Firebase and also see how it actually gives us our secret keys and it's a very uh, fun little way of how they do it. So before we jump to uh, this, the contents for this video, let's just have a refresher on what we had done previously. So we had set up our basic Spring Boot Maven project where we have all of our dependencies ready and we also went on and created a project on Firebase using console.firebase.google.com and we had a very simple project up and running. So in this video, let's actually go ahead with where we had stopped, which is basically this particular dashboard. I'm using a database which I've already created, so it's easier to show uh, how it works. As you can see, I've already done 12 reads and one uh, write, two writes here. So we'll see how all of this looks like. So let's go ahead and then jump into what's next to be done. So now that you've created your uh, Firebase project, we need to connect it to our local application. And for that, we definitely need our secret keys, right? A bunch of stuff, bunch of uh, keys which we need to connect to our local application. So how do we get them? So go to settings here, project settings, and go to service accounts. So the accounts which we use for our application. And here, what you need to do is go to database secrets. Or you can either go here as well. So it's decay or this is legacy. So uh, not supported anymore. And it's supported that you use the admin SDK. So let's go ahead and do that. Here for any implementation, we have uh, the configuration ready and we can generate a private key, which is going to basically give us this JSON file. So when we click on generate new private key, it gives us this particular JSON file, which we then save inside our application, and load it when we are setting up our runner. So we are using Java. So this is going to be our Java code for our application. It also gives us the database URL, which is our current URL. And we can copy this and put it inside our Java code. So before that, let's just create, uh, go to generate new private key. And let's do generate key. And this will give us a service account key.json. So yeah, here you go. We have our JSON ready. And all you have to do is just call it service account Key. Even if, if you don't call it that, it's fine, but just to understand what it's doing, call it this and save it inside your application. So where do we actually save it? So we save it here. So go inside resources. It's basically a resource inside our file and do a new uh, file and call it service account key.json. And inside this, we can put our application. So let me just uh, take out all our files and put it here. So this is basically what's inside my service account key.json. It will be different for you and this will uh, deactivate until we upload the video. So it has a bunch of uh, keys, email, client ID, tokens, a bunch of uh, search URLs, certification, all of that inside our service account key.json. Now what we need to do is uh, load that file inside our application and runtime and then use that to actually authorize our application at runtime so that whenever we use our application can directly automatically uh, go and authorize us to use Firebase, right? So let's see how we do that and how do we actually uh, work with this. So first, go inside your main main method and do a class loader, class loader equal to crud runner dot class dot get class loader. So we get the current class loader here and then we get the file from where we actually want the resource or we load the file. So what we do is we create a file. Let's import the class. Oh, sorry. Java IO. And this is going to be a new file. And all we're going to do is class loader dot get resource. And where do we get the resource from? So since it's going to be in the class path, because everything which is under resources uh, goes on the Java class path. We can all we can do is just do service account key dot JSON and it will read it for us. Now, uh, once we get this, we need to return the absolute path for this particular file. So what we do is we do a dot get 
file. Um, let me just check how this works. Then we can add it inside our application. So this is again boilerplate code which is available there. So this is how it's going to look like. So we have file input streams, we have absolute path. And uh, let's add an exception to our signature, file not found. And yep, simple stuff. So we have our service account here ready and we get our absolute path. You can do a system dot uh, out dot print to see how uh, we get the path and what it, where it is actually point to. Next thing would be to copy basically this and paste it here. So let's do that. And once we do that, we will have our application up and running and we'll go through what's happening in the code as well. So here I have uh, what we use for here. So let's just add our method signatures and we are good to go. So what's happening here? So we use the Firebase options class and we ask, set the credentials from our service account, which is a file. And then we set our database URL and build it. After we build our options, we initialize our applications with those Firebase options. And that basically authorizes us to use Firebase. So this is what's happening and how we connect our uh, project or database with our local app. It's pretty straightforward, pretty simple. Just uh, copy or generate your uh, private key, which gives you this service account JSON file. Put it inside your resources folder and then use this boilerplate code to initialize your Firebase application to authorize Firebase. So we have this done and ready. Now let's create our database, which we can connect to our application. So go to Firestore. And here we have our database URL. So we basically have a database up and running. We just need to add stuff to it, right? So here I have a collection inside my database and let's just create a new collection. So let's call this um, CRUD user. So basically somebody who's using this uh, application and document ID is going to be, let's say user one and the field is going to be name and it's going to have a value um, let's say Ronak oh sorry Ronak yes uh, the next thing is going to have is a uh, profession so let's say freelancer and then we can just do a save so this is uh, us making a schema or a collection inside our NoSQL database it has a user one and it also has two fields inside our um, database. So this is how we created a new schema inside our Firecrud main database. And now we can connect our application and then basically get to this or add stuff to this. So this is a database ready. And whenever we do a create update or delete from our app local application, we can see that updating in real time in our particular dashboard. So in the next video, we'll start creating our uh, object, our class, our data and our DTOs for our application where we can uh, create services around on top of it, CRUD services, create update lead services, and then actually hit our Firestore database and see how it works. All of that in the next video. So what did we learn in this particular video? We learned how we can create or authorize our local application with Firebase. We had some boilerplate code, which basically loads a resources file, which has our all the secret keys. And then we use Firebase options to connect to our Firebase application and then, then run it. All of this is done and then we create our Firestore database which updates in real time, create a new collection and then we can uh, query our database using the CRUD user collection and then so on and so forth. So this is it for this video. In the next video, we'll start building our local application so that we can uh, start hitting our Firebase um, database. So thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.